going to be happening right in front of you. We ask that everybody please stay in your seats, turn your cell phones off, stay out of the aisles, and have a great time. We want to welcome you tonight to a magic show performed by one of our very own Super Sunday magicians. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Christopher Magic Man Miller. How are you guys tonight? Good? You guys ready for some magic? Yeah! Let me take these sunglasses off. So can you guys see this? Yeah. You know what this is? A Rubik's Cube. Okay. So I want you to examine this, Miranda. Tell me that it's completely real. Completely real. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this. And I always have problems with this. You know, I hate these things. So what I usually end up doing is that. Wow. Put this one over here. Set it on top right there. 
What in the world is going on here? You got a little smoke pouring out from over here. Is there a fire? Is there a fire? Fire. I don't think it's fire. And now you just made a mess. You're cleaning that up after church, I hope you know. Oh, well, magically disappeared. You're good. You are good. All right. And the, the cups. I don't get that at all. What, what's the purpose of this shenanigan? We've got lights. Oh, we got stars. It's not even spinning. I just wanted to show you guys how, how great I am. Well, then show us how great you are. Make that thing spin. Um, we haven't rehearsed this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what? All right, well, uh, I'm kind of confused. We're supposed to be having Super Sunday and uh, not a uh, magic super show. show, right? Super show? Yeah. And the glasses are super, super awesome. Super something. Oh, and here is a nice little vest. All right. So uh, I was not that impressed. How? How? Wait, because of the statement that you made at the beginning. Where's that, where's that bag at? When you had this, you did something with it. You said something about what, what was this? What did you say after it? Wait, here, no. Let me go find out because these girls don't lie. What did he say? He said that Jesus can't do what he does. You think Jesus can't do what you can? Well, I think my magic show was a little better. A little better. Jesus didn't do it, man. Now, I'm going to hold my hand over Christopher. If you think his magic show was better, scream for him. Ready? Here we go. By booing makes you applauding. So if you don't vote for Christopher, then be quiet. Here we go. Ready? Sister Kathy and you two. Awesome. All right. If you think Jesus can do a better... Magic show. I can't even say that. If you think Jesus does a better job, yes, yes, he is the king. Uh, he, ah, he is the Lord of Lords. His name is who? Who? And him? Oh, your magic sticks. So you're telling me, okay, shh, what he said is that anything Jesus can do, he can do better. So, I want to talk to you about some miracles that Jesus did. So you think, you think, like George, what was up with George earlier? What was that all about? I just came in on the end of it, something about George was uh, reading the Bible, which is good, but that George can do magic like Jesus, and he was trying to... Oh man! Yeah, I talked to George what is? The show. Oh, so you're the one that got George turned on to a turned on to the magic healings, magic healings. All right. So anything Jesus can do, you can do better. Now, basically, oh, you're gonna. Oh, this is gonna be good. You guys get ready for this. Christopher is about to get his tail kicked. All right. First miracle. Now, the, we all know that the Bible is full of miracles. Full of miracles that God performed Himself. Full of miracles that Jesus performed, and full of miracles that that Jesus and that God gave others the power to perform. Okay, there was healings and stuff in the Bible that weren't only done by Jesus the physical, that were done by Jesus and the Spirit of God. First thing I came up with is something that everybody knows. It's a story about um, I think there was a multitude of people gathered together. Something like about you guys. Only there were about five thousand people in the crowd. Looking out here, I'm guessing that there's about Maybe 55 people here, maybe 60. Just guessing. We don't count. So we'll just say, let's just say there's 50. Let's go low. Let's go low. There's 50 people here. Now, Jesus had 5,000. They all got together uh, during the Passover. They were hungry. And Jesus said, well, what do we have? And the disciples were like, oh, I didn't bring food. Did you bring food? No, I didn't bring food. You bring food. So they said, well, let's go out. Let's go find somebody. So they went out looking and looking and looking. And they found... A little boy. And this little boy had a good mother. I picked Ethan. <laughs> yeah, nobody gets that, but that's no, okay. This little boy had a great mother, 
had a, uh, I'm sure she was a good wife to her husband, and just, just fantastic all the way around. Well, she thought that my son's going down to see Jesus. Now, I don't know why she wasn't with him. I didn't even think about that. Anyway, so she, her son went down, he would see Jesus, I want to see Jesus. But any, like any good mother would be like, well, here, you got to take your lunch and make sure you have all clean underwear and, and take a coat in case it gets chilly. I'm sure it was in St. Louis. So it was something like that. So this little boy said, they said, what do you have to eat, young man? Hand me that. So he handed it to him. And Jesus said, well, what do we have? And Peter said, or who said it? Somebody said it. One of the disciples. And if you want to know where the story is found, it's found in John 6, 1 through 13. Jesus said, well, all we found was two fishes. I don't know if you can see that. I have two uh, goldfish crackers here. And five loaves of bread. But that is not enough to feed 5,000. These people were hungry. They've been here all day listening to Jesus preach. Or in today's terms, they went to grow on Brother Miller's, Brother Miller's church services. And they're hungry. Nobody got that. That's okay. That's between me and me. All right. So Jesus said, well, you know what? That's enough. It's faith. That's what it's about. Faith. So he took it and he gave thanks. He was like, thank you, Father, for the food that we're about to eat. And he started handing it out. Okay? He started giving it out. He gave out so much that everybody, now I said there's over 5,000 people there. Everybody there ate. Not only did they ate, eat, they ate plenty. They were full when they got done eating. And you know what? Everybody got a go-kart to go home, Kurt. Everybody got a go-kart. That's what my grandma used to say. I want a go-kart. She never finished her food. I always wanted to finish it, but she wouldn't give it to me. She'd take it home in a go-kart. <laughs> but everybody got a, a go-set to go home. They got to take the extra home with them. They got to feed the people that were home that they didn't get to come. That's a miracle. Now, there's not 50 people here. We're guessing low. I want you to take this, and I want you to feed everybody here. But I want it to be full. Are you guys hungry? Yeah. All right. Who's really hungry? Some are going to eat more than others. And I want to make sure that everybody here eats, and I want them to take something home. Anybody got family at home that may be hungry too? Feed everybody and send them home with a to-go bag. Amanda, if you can get me some extra bags, we're going to start gathering up all this extra food. And he's going to perform this magic. And you guys are about to eat dinner. Here we go. All right, here we go. Jesus, we hate to tell you this, but, but Lazarus has passed away. 
And, and when Jesus found out, he, he cried. Just like if your best friend died, you cry, right? So he, he cried and he said, okay, take me to where his body is. So he took him to where his body is and he, he said, okay, he was buried in the tomb. Well, just pay attention to me for a second. We'll get the story out. Okay, shh. So he, okay, I, I know what's going on. I prepared this thing. Okay, I know, I, know this, I know everything that's going on. I don't trust me. All right. So Jesus said, take me to his body. Guys, be quiet. Take me to his body and show me where he's buried. So they took him to the grave that, that Lazarus was buried in. It had a stone, kind of like what Jesus was a tomb. And he said, move that stone away. And they're like, Lord, he stinks by now. Yeah, his body's been sitting there for four days. It's starting to decompose. Everybody's ever had a dead mouse in your house? I have. And you don't find it for days. You smell it long before you ever find it, right? But that's not comparing Lazarus to a dead mouse. But that's basically the story. He, his body was starting to decay, starting to, uh, whatever the other word is that goes along with decay. And he started, hi, Cousin Luke. Hey, Brother Greg. And he started to, uh, what are you doing here? I got a problem. Oh, boy. I know what Oh, good. Perfect. Goes right along with my story. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry. Buddy, it's alright. Let's do this together. Okay. Ross said he's a good dog. He did it once, but. He did once. Yeah, just once. Okay, let me finish this story. So he said, Take me to the body. And they're like, Lord, he stinks by now. And, and Jesus, let's see, where is it at? Uh, we're in John 11, 35. And uh, Jesus said unto... I, he said, uh, Take away the stone. They did that. And he said, If thou wouldst believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. And then some more stuff goes on. Anyway, he starts, Jesus starts saying something at this point. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. And guess what? Lazarus, who was in his grave clothes, it was all tied up. Oh, I forgot one. <laughs> Do that one later. Uh, Lazarus was in his grave clothes, and he was all wrapped up, kind of like a mummy would look. And he was laid her together, and he started hopping out. And guess what? They unwrapped him. They took the wraps off, and Lazarus was alive after being dead for four days. How long has that dog been dead? About an hour. Perfect. Not even that hard. Go ahead. Bring them up here. You guys are about to see something that's amazing. Please do not be scared about what's getting ready to happen, but we're getting ready to bring this dog back to life because we have Christopher Magic Man Miller. You guys excited? No. No, we're not. Oh boy. He's covering it up. He's got this. <laughs> wow. Everything's good. Whoever picked this volunteer, they're unquiet. Would you like to do volunteer? Yeah. How about Kurt Miller? Would you like to come up and volunteer as his assistant? Uh, no, this volunteer right here. Oh, you need a new dog? A new, a new, yeah. Somebody go find a dog that's just barely alive. <laughs> come on, you guys got this. Do some of your magic CPR stuff. Here. She's not the magician. You're the magician. She's my assistant, so she knows some magic. <laughs> well, you're going to have to perform a miracle. <laughs> we just don't want him to get cold enough. Cousin Luke? He usually don't sit too still when he's alive. That's what we taught him to do. We have five. Okay. So they're miracle workers and dog whisperers. Alright, give them a hand. Good miracle. Nice. You stop. We don't, we don't say that. Cranston's ill. Unbelievable, Cousin Luke. Sleeping. Oof. 
Alright, what, what else? Oh, Easy for What else she got?
and we're going to talk about the two greatest miracles ever performed. You guys would like to know about that? Yeah. Yeah, come back next Sunday and find out about that. And then we're going to have a Sunday where we don't have Super Sunday, and then we're going to have two more Super Sundays where we got some people that God did miracles in their life. Yeah. And you're going to get to see it firsthand, what God can do, the power of God. Not the power of Christopher or any Chris Angel or what's one of the others? Chris Angel. We'll go with that. Or any, anybody, Houdini or whatever. Anybody else that you've seen on TV did tricks. They tricked you. The devil does tricks. He tricks you. And we don't have to do that. So if you guys go, let's find us a place to pray. Because we don't have to be